Today, I am sharing some natural handmade Christmas gifts that you can make in the kitchen with ingredients that are readily available. Welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. So we're going to just prep some of our ingredients for a few of our upcoming projects. I have this medium orange and I am cutting it down into some nice thin slices. Now yes, we are drying some orange slices. This is the first time I have ever done this and I was really excited to do this. So I cut them down to into some thin slices and now I've got some paper towel and I'm just removing some of the excess liquid before placing them onto the cookie tray and the cookie tray is lined with some parchment paper. Next, I am now taking another orange and as you can see, I'm using a vegetable peeler and I'm removing some of the skin as I wanted to dry some of that for some of my projects as well. I have this citrus zester as well and it is just creating some nice thin strips as you can see right here. And I will admit, the peeler was a lot easier to remove that peel. All right, I'm gonna just scatter those around just so that they have some breathing room. And then I am going to be placing them in the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And I let these sit in the oven all day while I was working on my projects. This is just about 10 minutes in and I flipped them over and I noticed that um, there was more liquid being released. So I just took a paper towel and dabbed it off. And as you saw, I also kind of mixed around the zest just to help to dry that out better as well. Next, I have this container filled with water and vinegar. Now, I know you're supposed to use lemon juice. I didn't have any on hand, so I thought I'd try uh, vinegar. And then I'm cutting this apple down into thin slices and putting them into that water and vinegar solution. Apparently the vinegar or the lemon juice is supposed to help the apples from browning. So I let them soak for about half an hour or so, and then I'm going to just remove the excess water and put them onto the tray as well. And then I put them in the oven with the orange slices at the same temperature. So you just have to remember that once in a while you need to go in and flip the fruit that you're drying around. If you have a dehydrator, then you can definitely use that. I don't have one, so I am using my oven. So my orange zest did not take very long to dry, neither did the apples, but the oranges did take a good part of the day, but it was all while I was prepping all of my other ingredients. So for this first gift, we have a beautiful selection of some natural ingredients, and I'm gonna be placing them inside this clear cellophane bag. I have some cinnamon sticks and some fir pine cones as well. Our orange slices, they are nice and dry and they actually smell amazing. I was really impressed with those. I decided to use some birch bark curls, bay leaves, and I've got some cloves and pink peppercorns. As you can see, I'm placing all the ingredients into this clear bag in a nice way, just to make sure you can see everything clearly. And you can of course use anything you'd like. What we are doing is creating some ingredients for a simmer pot. This is something I've been wanting to try for quite a while. And I have to tell you, these ingredients all put together in the bag. Oh, it smells so, so good. So now that we've got all our ingredients in the bag, I'm gonna to start to decorate this bag. I had just put a twist tie around the top of the bag, but of course I didn't like the look of that. So I'm using some jute twine and I'm just tying that on just with a simple bow. And I'm just trimming off any of the excess cellophane. And as you can see, I like to trim it off in an upward motion that just creates a fun little fanned look. I created some instructions on how to use the simmer pot on this little printable. You can screenshot that there. I'm placing everything inside a paper bag. I thought a paper bag was a nice natural look. Then I'm going to just fold that up 
and I'm going to use a stapler to enclose the top. Now I am using some more jute twine and I'm going to just cut off a long strip. I'm going to wrap it around our package and then tie it off on the top. And as you can see, I have some sweet little jingle bells and I am going to attach those as well. Of course, feel free to embellish your package any way you'd like. I just like the simple natural look of this particular piece. And I think that this would be a great hostess gift for the upcoming holiday season. This was such an easy project to put together with beautiful ingredients, as I said, that are readily available and I think it would make a wonderful gift. So for this next easy gift, you'll need a cute little jar. I picked this one up from Dollar Tree and you're going to need some sea salt. I have some in fine and coarse and I'm mixing the two together in this jar. Now you do want to put the salt in the jar so you know exactly how much you need to fill the jar. I placed it in a bowl and now I've got some crushed rosemary and some crushed thyme. I'm just putting those into the salt I'm not sure how much of the rosemary I needed, so I'm just adding a bit of it at a time and mixing it. And then I'm like, had a sniff and I'm like, nope, it needs some more. So I went ahead and added some more to the salt. You can use some dried lemon rind as well. That would be really nice or any other herbs that you like. Next, you're going to need a funnel and you can see there that I have a bamboo skewer. I'm putting it into the funnel and I use the bamboo skewer to help place the salt down through the tube to fill the jar. But as time went on, I found that I just needed to shake the funnel and it went in just fine. I have to say this sea salt smells amazing. Okay, now we need to package it. So I have this little jute bag that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And as you can see, I removed the really bright green string. I had this jute twine that was a nice dark green color in my stash. And I decided to restring the bag and you just want to make sure that you have a nice long strand. I used a bobby pin or sorry, a safety pin and I strung it through the holes at the top of the bag and you'll want to do the same for both sides. You'll just want to make sure that you tie off the ends so that they don't come through when you go and attach or insert the next string for the other side of your bag. I did remove the tag that was on the inside as well. We don't need that part. And then I placed our jar of salt inside. I had already labeled it. It's titled Rosemary Thyme Sea Salt, and it would make a beautiful gift for anybody who absolutely loves to cook. So for this next gift, I am using my mortar and pestle and I taken some cinnamon sticks and I'm breaking them down and then I'm going to use my pestle to crush them down even further. I need the cinnamon sticks to be in small pieces. You could also put these into a bag and crush them with a rolling pin. And I know oh, this smells amazing. Cinnamon is such a wonderful scent for the holiday season. So I have my cinnamon sticks, some cloves, some black and pink peppercorns, some cardamom seeds, our orange rind that we dried and some star anise. Now the star anise, I am breaking them, some of them down into smaller pieces, 
but I did leave a few whole because I think they just look so, so pretty. So as you can see, I put them all into a bowl and then I am going to just give it a good mix. So I am using a little canning jar for this and I'm going to be filling it up with what is mulling spices. So mulling spices is um, a great way to flavor some wine or apple juice or apple cider and as you can see I was adding the star anise here and there as I was filling it up to make sure that you could see it I placed one piece on the very top I thought it just absolutely looked beautiful and here I'm just topping it up So I'm just going to close it up with my ceiling lid and my screw top lid. Look how pretty it looks in that jar. So I actually ended up finding a lid that didn't have any printing on it and I created my own label and I placed that on top and it says mulling spices. To remove the label I like to use some tape and that peels off the backing really easily and then you can just put the label into place. I created those labels in Canva. Next. I am going to include some tea bags that I had on hand. I thought that it would be an excellent way to put the mulling spices in. I'm going to be putting the tea bags in these clear self-sealing bags that I had on hand. And I included about five of them, but of course, feel free to add as many as you like, or you could even just omit this step. Some people will end up just straining out the mulling spices as they pour the liquid into a cup. So now to package this up, I'm adding a touch of some raffia just around the lid. And I'm again, keeping this very, very natural looking. Now I'm gonna just use this muslin bag that I had on hand and I'm placing everything inside, including the how-to on how to use the mulling spices. I'm just going to pull the string tight and now I'm gonna decorate it just a little bit. I'm using some jute twine and I'm gonna wrap that around the top and just make a simple bow. And then I'm also gonna add some cute little jingle bells and a sprig of some faux greenery. using a little dab of some hot glue on the edge of or on the end of the faux greenery and I'm tucking that underneath and it's ready to go. Smells amazing when you use this and I really enjoyed putting this together. So for this gift I found this cute little jar with this fun little uh, charm on it again from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be filling this up with some Epsom salts. Now again, I'm pre-filling it so I know exactly how much salt I am going to need. So again, I'm using a funnel. The lid or the top of this jar was a lot more narrow than the last one. I'll dump it into a bowl and then I'm adding some dried lavender blossoms that I had saved from my garden. I'm just going to mix that in using a craft stick and then I'm adding about five drops of lavender oil. Of course, um, if you're making a bigger uh, batch, then make adjustments as needed. So I'm just going to mix the oil in really, really well and it smells so, so pretty. And now I'm just going to add that Epsom salt back into our cute little bottle and I love this bottle because of the charm I don't know I think it's just so cute so it does have a cork stopper so I put that back into place and then you can decorate it any way that you'd like I decided that I wanted to add a touch of 
birch bark. So I am actually gonna make some leaf shapes out of this birch bark along with some tag shapes as I'm gonna be using those for the next packages that we are creating. I've got my crocodile and it's the big chomper and it works really well for adding a hole into some thicker items such as this bark. So I'm just punching the tags and the leaves. I felt I wanted to do this just in case I wanted to add some string onto them, which I do for some of them. Aren't they cute? I love how these turned out. So to wrap our lavender Epsom salts, I've got this beautiful vintage lace and this beautiful sparkly eyelash trim. I'm going to cut down my lace to size and I believe this actually used to be a curtain and I picked it up from a thrift store. There's a weight on the one edge so I cut that off and then I cut the lace down to a smaller size that I felt would be the perfect size to wrap around our beautiful little bottle. Once your lace is cut down to the size that you need for your bottle or jar, you're going to lift it all up and gather it just to make sure it fits. Now I am going to be just cutting off a piece of our eyelash trim and it's just so beautiful and delicate looking and I love the sparkle that it has. I do believe I picked this up from my local dollar store. I know Dollar Tree has a lot of pretty um, yarns as well so I would definitely check out to see what they have or any of your craft stores. So I just wrapped the yarn around the top and I'm just tying it off with a simple little bow and you can add as much or as little of this as you like. Of course you could use a ribbon. Now I'm just trimming off the lace just a little bit at the top. It was just a little bit too bulky. Now I'm just again adding a little bit more of that sparkly eyelash trim. I just thought it was such a beautiful touch. I'm adding this laser cut snowflake that I had in my stash. I got that from my local dollar store. I know a lot of places are carrying laser cut pieces and a lot of people can create their own now. Next I am just adding this birch bark leaf and I labeled what was inside just for a beautiful natural touch. So for this next fun and delicious gift that we are making is going to start off with almonds. I like to put them onto a tray and roast them. So I put it on a low temp and I will mix them around every once in a while. You do need to keep a close eye on these because you do not want them to burn. So as you can see, they are getting a little toasty and what happens is that they start to crackle a bit and the aroma is so, so nice and smells delicious. So I've allowed my almonds to cool off and now that I put them in a bowl and then I am also adding these honey roasted nuts that I picked up from my local grocery store and I added about half of the jar. I have some dried cranberries, some delicious chocolate chips that again from my local grocery store, some raisins and a mix of some red and green chocolate covered candies. Sorry, candy coated chocolates. I'm giving those to a mix and I'm adding more peanuts as I, as I desire. Uh, of course, you can mix anything you'd like into a yummy trail mix such as we are creating. Now I am going to be filling up two jars. This first one here is a beautiful one that I picked up from Ikea a while ago and I'm just gonna fill that jar right up. I'm just making sure I've got a mix of everything so you can see it all nice and clearly through the jar. And at the other jar, I just filled that up and the family actually ate all that. <laughs> So to decorate our jar, I am using this red and neutral jute twine I picked up from Winners and I'm just trimming that down. I wrapped it around the neck of our jar. 
And then I'm just going to tie it off with a simple bow, but of course you can use anything that you'd like. I am adding this cute little tag that I made and I labeled it as Christmas Trail Mix. So I'm just going to tie that on. I used a black Sharpie fine tip marker as well as a in black and I used a red one just to add a pretty little touch around the edge. So now I'm just adding on some more jute twine as I wanted to add a few of our birch bark leaves and I wanted to dangle them down a little bit. So I'm just gonna tie them on with a simple knot. So you can see how beautiful and natural this looks and I'm loving it. I added several leaves and this is definitely something that the whole family can enjoy. So for this particular natural gift, I am using this stoneware pie plate that I picked up from the thrift store. It was only $2 and it's the Pampered Chef brand. I am using these pine cones that I had foraged along with these birch bark curls. And as you could see, I was using my orange slices that we dried along with the apple slices. And we're also adding some cinnamon sticks. So all we're doing is actually filling up this pie plate, but I'm treating it more like it's a tray. And I'm just adding all of our beautiful pieces along with these larger pine cones that I decided to add as well. And we're just going to create a beautiful arrangement with all of these pieces. And I have to say, it smells so good. This would make a beautiful center piece for the table or a coffee table or side table. It smells seriously. It's just between the pine cones and the orange slices and the cinnamon sticks. It just really smells like a country Christmas. And it was so simple to put together. Now to package it. I am going to be using this shrink wrap that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I wanted everything to stay contained within the platter. Now you could wrap this up in say a muslin sack or some burlap, but I knew that the pine cones would grip onto those fabrics and then everything would kind of come apart and I didn't want that to happen. So I thought this was the best solution. I'm just placing this tray inside of our shrink wrap bag and then you want to twist it at the top and then you are actually going to need your blow dryer. And let me tell you, <laughs> this was actually a lot of fun. But just to make my life a little bit easier, I did tie it off just again with a simple little bow. And then I didn't have to like, like worry about it coming undone on me if I accidentally let go. But here's where the magic starts. So I am using my blow dryer and you can see how it is shrinking and conforming to the shape of our arrangement in the platter. <laughs> really, it was so, so fun to do this. I was really impressed at how well this shrink wrap worked for something like this. The pine cones didn't even break through the plastic, which I was quite impressed. And then of course, I'm sure I know here where I live, you can recycle this when you're done. So I'm done with the blow dryer. Now I am just trimming off the top as it was too bulky. So I, again, I like to just cut it up into um, an upward motion that just provides a nice fan look. I have these later laser cut wood Christmas trees that I picked up from a store called Dollarama here in Canada. They are Christmas ornaments. And I thought that was a really nice natural looking touch for this package. I just tied it on again with some jute twine and I love the simplicity of this. 
I'm just adding a little bit more jute twine just for another added little touch, but of course you can decorate this with anything. If you're planning on giving this right away, you could also add some fresh evergreens. I think that would be a beautiful scent within this package as well. Here's a recap of all the lovely natural handmade gifts that we had made in the kitchen today. I hope it has inspired all of you to create something handmade for those who are special in your life. So let me know down below, what gifts are you planning on making for this holiday season? I would really love to know. It really inspires me. And let me know which of these was your favorite. I want to say a big thank you to all of you for joining me today and for all your continued support. It means a lot. I hope you're having a wonderful, blessed Christmas season and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.